Hey, everybody. Welcome to the stream tonight. Um, I was sitting there staring at the screen, uh, realizing that I hadn't started. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Um, anyway, we are looking at our blog, where we left it last time. Um, and we can see... Um, still got... The weird Windows error with um, Beat Nitro plugin, uh, but things seem to be working for us. That's fine. Uh, just before the stream started, um, I updated NX, the Angular CLI, Analog, and then a couple other dependencies. Um, and everything seems to be going well. Um, if we look, um, the big changes in um, Angular 1.1 are um, the prod mode. Um, so it, um, they fixed an issue with the prod mode. Um, and then they've added the support for testing the um, single file components, which we've been using. Um, this, I, I want to check this out, but I also want to, um, because they use VTest, right, for um, for the testing in um, analog. Uh, and then um, some CSS transform stuff. And then they added support for Project Crystal. Um, and then support components and control flow and markdown. Um, so. That one actually seems kind of interesting. So we'll have to take a look at that one. Um, but other than that, we are looking at our um, component here. Um, actually, you know what? Um, first of all, thank you everybody for being here. Um, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Um, thank you for coming on a Tuesday instead of Monday when I normally stream. Um, we have a client in Australia um, and I was, so my manager's out this week. I think I mentioned that last week. And um, with her being out, um, I'm taking over like demoing in meetings and stuff. And because, uh, you know, because of the time zone differences, it actually works out really well uh, to be on phone calls with um, our Australian, um, you know, our Australian partners at this time of the evening um, for me. Um, I think it's early morning for them. And so, um, yeah, that's what happened yesterday. Um, but thank you, everybody, who can join me tonight. Um, and I am happy to be back streaming Angular. I just didn't want to skip it again. Um, and I think the project that I'm working on is uh, it's getting more under control. Um, and what I mean by that is, like, early on in when you start new projects, um, you'll see that um, quite often there's a lot that goes on, right? Um, and because of that, you can you can get into these um, I don't know I don't know what to call it, but like um, situations. Is that a good way to put it? Um, where things need to happen quickly. Um, and because they, they have to happen quickly, um, I want to turn off this grid while I'm talking. Um, sometimes things change really, really quickly um, with very little notice. Um, and that's, you know, that, that's kind of the phase we're in with the, with the project I'm on now. Um, most of the time, um, you know, my, my schedule is very predictable. Um, but right now, um, it isn't. And that's okay. I mean, it's exciting. Um, I love I love working in environments like that where um, you know things things can happen quickly um, and change quickly, um, but not all the time. It's fun for a while, but not all the time. Anyway, back to what we were looking at um, tonight. Um, there's a couple of things to take a look at. First of all, um, we have a, an articles page, right? Um, and this is our index page um, for the articles that would list all the articles. Um, so um, 
I think this, this page will just list all the articles straight down. So we're going to build that page today. Um, but before we do that, there's no way to get to that page before without manually editing the URL. Um, and I would like to fix that. So we added this footer at the bottom. Um, and it's kind of a sticky footer. Um, so it will stay in place and, you know, the content in between this and the header will, um, you know, it, it will move. So any of the content here will move, um, but the header and the footer will stay in place. So let's go, um, let's go add the index stuff to our footer. Um, one thing I do want to take a look at really quick is if we get down into, yeah, it'll be fine. Um, on a phone size, um, so one of the things I was thinking about, um, and this is where you have to be careful, right? Um, I was thinking about making this footer auto hide so it wouldn't show up unless you hovered over it. Um, that's one of the things you need to be careful about. Um, because on like tablets and phones, right, where it's mostly touch input, there's not really the notion of um, of hover. And so if you hide things under a hover action, you may be making it much more difficult for your phone and tablet users. So we're going to leave our footer in place. We aren't going to hide it. Um, and um, let's just work on that first, right? So. Go grab WebStorm, and I'm just going to close everything, and let's open up our footer. Um, and really, this should be fairly simple. Um, instead of this, um, we just want to do a um, href, or actually, we don't even want to do that. Um, We could just say um, graph, right? Um, is it and you're, I, I always forget. I don't do this very often. Um, so Angular dot dev um, and href. Um, In right, uh, no. Why did that? Um, href. Common routing tasks. That's the one we're looking for. Um, base href. We don't really worry about that one too much. Um, hash location strategy. Um, routing in a single application. I like I'm drawing a blank thinking of it, and I'm gonna feel really, really dumb when I see it. Um, and this is, I mean, senior devs have to look stuff up too, right? Um, so no, it's not the router outlet. Um, router link. Router link. It's not an ng ref, it's a router link. Told you I was gonna feel dumb when I saw it. Um, <laughs> so here, and we don't even need the, uh, we can just add router link um, equals, and here we'll just go slash index. Um, and um, let's just call this our archive. Um, so for right now, this will be fairly simple. Um, WebStorm is smart enough to realize that I don't have router link. Um, and the cool thing is um, that it will import it for me. Um, I don't think I need to do more. Than oh, I do. Um, so I also need to do with um, here, we can just do analog. Um, and this is goes into the exports. Um, you're not exports. What am I doing? Analog imports. 
right? Um, and so now um, it's imported router link and it's added it. Um, this is the same as um, me adding this, um, right? Um, they're the same theme. Um, and this doesn't go inside the host. I keep making this mistake. Um, so either way is is fine to import it in single file components. Um, I tend to import it this way. That way I don't have to put it in the metadata. Um, and that, that should... Um, we've got our link down here. And when we click on it, did I really put that index? I did. Um, this should really go to articles. I am just not, <laughs> I need to get with it, right? There we go. So now we can get to our archive um, and now we can go back home. Um, curious, like we go and we, like our dark theme, like our link. It's interesting that um, our links must be missing something um, to style our links for Daisy UI. Because um, this link is kind of ugly. Um, I'm not going to admit an archive. I'm not sure if I like ar archive. Let's just call this um, all articles. Um, and then let's go take a look at Daisy UI and, and see what I'm missing to make my links look good. Because um, I definitely, I want those links to be styled better. They, they just don't look good the way they are, right? Um, so link. So with my link, uh, there's all of our modifiers. So here with just the link, it's a simple link um, and a normal link. Um, and we can add color to it also. Um, show underline only on hover. Um, so you know, I was tempted to do this, but this is actually um, an accessibility violation. Um, you should always have your um, links underlined um, to make sure that you're meeting the accessibility stuff. So, um, well, I do like this effect. Um, we're not going to do it. We're going to we're going to stay accessible. Um, and I think I'm going to go with an accent color for our link. Um, so, if we look at the HTML is just link and link access. Um, so we can just go class equals link and then link dash access. So now it should look like a link um, so people know that they can click on it. Um, so there we go. I did link access instead of link accent. Um, there we go. So now our link is in the accent color. Um, if we swap over to something else, um, you know, um, so there we go. Uh, I, I really actually don't like how close we are to the side here. Um, so within our class here, let's just add um, like a P4 padding. Um, that really should be enough. Um, Yeah, that pulled us up off the side. Um, there we go. I'm good with that. That'll take us to here. Now we can get here. Um, so now we can get everywhere within our application, right? Um, 
which is good. Now we can now we can move around to all of the pages that exist within our blog. Um, so let's go ahead and commit that. Um, and hey, Josh, thanks for joining. Um, yeah, lining up the stream with your coffee break? No problem, man. Um, I was just talking about um, talking about some people that live over in your neck of the woods. Um, that's why I had to reschedule the stream. Uh, what time is it in um, in like um, Australia today? Um, well, actually, technically, it's kind of tomorrow. I think um, they're they're early tomorrow for us, right? Um, but uh, winds up being early morning, if I remember correctly. Um, anyway, got this all in place. So um, added link to footer. Let's go ahead and commit this. Um, 10.15. That's, that's actually not too bad. Um, so yeah, yeah, not too bad at all. Um, and I mean, yeah, we were we were meeting like at nine or ten a.m. depending on. Um, yes, I'm I'm horrible at. Um, I will admit I am horrible at geography. I don't know how many time zones are in um, in Australia. I know Australia is fairly large, um, so I'm assuming multiple multiple time zones. You know, let's let's not be stupid. Let's instead of just give bad information, let's um, um Australian time zones. Right? Um So it looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five. Christmas Island time. That's cool. Um so depending on, it looks like five time zones. That's that's pretty good. Um, so yeah, I knew the weird thing about um, like Mercator projections and things like that, uh, which is well, Mercator is actually a good projection. It's a better projection than um, the various map projections we see. Um, so like if we go to maps.google.com. And we zoom way out. Um, so the problem is that things get so distorted. Um, and they often wind up looking bigger than they are, depending on how close you are to the equator. Um, so like Australia is fairly large, um, but it doesn't it winds up looking smaller than the US. Um, I'm not sure what they are. Um, square mileage or square kilometers or area wise, right? Um, but because of how much further north the US is than Australia, it winds up looking a lot larger. Um, and that's just because when you take a globe and you flatten it out, right? Um, these parts where they're they're closer together, like the tops of my fingers, right, where it's closer together, and then you spread it out into a flat, it spreads out like that. Um, and so, you know, things towards the edge of the map tend to get exaggerated versus, you know, things more towards the equator tend to stay similar size. Um, and so, you know, Australia is much closer to the equator. Um, because of that, it, it doesn't experience quite the expansion that like parts of the U.S. do. Um, so, um, you know, I, I lived in Guatemala for quite a while. It's kind of cool to see that showing up here. Um, that's actually, it's a trip down um, memory lane. So um, this area right here, Villa Nueva. Um, so this is Guatemala City. Um, and then you, you head south down Guatemala City. From Guatemala City, you'll come to Villa Nueva, um, which is a decent sized city. And then outside of Villa Nueva, um, well, so um, Lifetime de Primavera is a, is a nice place. Um, 
That's um I actually lived here for a while. Um in this area right here. Um and let's see. It's been it's been a while, so I'm trying to remember my way around. Um but Vienna Nueva is a big city. Um I also lived um In Esquintla. Um, I can't remember my way around very well. So Villanueva. There it is right here. So Esquintla. Um, so I, I lived in this city out this way. Um, so I know like Las Jacarandas and uh, just areas out here. Um, and then, um, I also lived in this crazy little place. There's Puerto Quetzal and San Jose. Um, but I lived in a place called La Machina. Um, which is really, really small place. I can't even remember where it is exactly. Um, I need to go. I don't know. We're, we're way off topic here, but. Uh, that just brings back memories. Um, so, yeah. Chuck pointed out to me how Adelaide, where I live, has a weird 30-minute time difference to most places, which I never realized was weird before. That is a little bit weird. Um, there are a couple of places like that, too. Like India. India. So does India and Adelaide line up pretty well? Because... Um, like from where I am, India is like 12 and a half hours off, which seems a little bit strange for, for time zones. Um, but it's, um, you know, so I wonder if Adelaide and India have similar differences like that. Anyway, um, going away from maps and back into what we're doing. Um, so our footer now works. Um, so now it's time to create our component um, for the index page. So if we go into our pages, we can see that we've got the articles here. Um, and within articles, we've got two different routes, right? We've got the index page, um, and then we've got the article page. Um, and then the routing, the way it works here is, um, so these folders, you know, wind up being the slash parts of your routes. So um, here, the home page, we, we created a home folder, but the articles page is actually part of our articles route. Um, and so if we look at the home page, and within here, we've got our article container um, that we were using. And that comes from this home folder. And this, this is a folder structure that um, Chow showed to me. Um, that, that I find to be really nice because they line up. Um, I'm trying to decide how I want to do articles. I don't think I want to do articles, um, just a for loop right here. I don't think that that's a good experience for the users. Um, so I want to take a look and just figure out, you know, what's a good way to do, do it. Um, I think we'll we'll do the same thing. We'll create a folder. Um, and the reason that this works, right, um, is that the home page and the home folder would have the same route. Um, and so if we name something the same as index, um, then it'll have the same route. And that allows us to not have to create like components and then bring them in here. Um, it allows us to keep the components close by. Um, so let, let's let's test that theory, right? Um, so let's create a new directory and we'll call it index. And Josh, you can correct me all you want. Um, if you guys, first of all, um, if you're here and you're not following Josh on YouTube. Um, you should go do it immediately. Um, Josh has an amazing YouTube channel. Um, 
let's go to YouTube. And here we'll just go search for Joshua Maroney. Um, so here's, um, here's Joshua's channel. Um, and I watch all of his stuff. The, I, I watch most of my YouTube in, um, in my basement on my Xbox. Uh, so um, I always feel a little bit weird pulling up people's YouTube channels um, where their videos aren't showing up as being watched and then saying, hey, I watch their stuff, right? Um, first of all, Josh produces good, good content. And you can tell by, you know, how many videos and subscribers he's got, but I love his content. Um, he, he did some amazing stuff with um, signals and um, he's, he's produced just amazing content for quite a while. Um, and he has really good content around um, what's the difference between declarative and imperative code. Just a lot of good stuff. Um, and goes into uh, like this video I enjoyed um, because um, he went through the stuff that he does um, to, um, I wanted to say to complete open source, but no, to, um, to commit to open source and, you know, to, um, to just be an open source um, maintainer or um, contributor. Contributor, that's the word I'm looking for. Just to be an open source contributor. He goes through his workflow on, you know, because, um, and I think he called this out, but there, there's a lot of things you need to know about the open source community before um, you should contribute to the open source community. Um, and once you know them, then it becomes easier to contribute. And I can't really speak from authority because I don't, I haven't really contributed to the open source community. Josh, on the other hand, has. Um, so this, this is a really good video on, you know, just how, if, if you're interested in contributing to open source, you can. Um, so yeah, um, definitely go check him out if you haven't. Um, and then, you know, like I said, chime in, Josh, if I'm doing something weird um, or you disagree with something I'm doing, because I want to learn. Um, but for, you know, everybody that um, isn't aware, um, so Brandon, Chow, and Josh um, work heavily on, um, on analog and the single file components, um, the three of them have contributed to quite a bit too. I'm not saying they're the only contributors. I'm just saying um, they're the ones that I know who, who show up to my stream. Um, and I, I also know that they, um, the three of them have contributed heavily to single file components. Um, so yeah, thank you for being here, Josh. And um, definitely let me know um, if what I'm doing, if my experiments are weird or wrong or anything like that, right? Um, so let's go ahead and just create um, oh, look at that. How did that happen? That is because I have the analog plugin because I'm using WebStorm. Um, that's not going to work for us because this analog, well, let's try it. Um, let's totally try this. Let's see what happens. So this, we're going to call this um, um, our all articles component. Um, and it's going to be super simple for now. Um, never mind. That is awesome. Thank you to the analog plugin. Um, I thought that wasn't going to work, but here we go. We've got, we've got our everything in place. So our styles are set up exactly how we want them to be. Um, we've got our template and all of that. That's awesome. Um, so here we can just say, um, that we want some metadata. Um, and I, I find myself using this tag a lot, um, because I'm using tailwind, um, because I want the host selector, um, and within the host selector, I want to add some classes, right? Um, so we always want a block class, um, almost always, um, you know, this might be grid or something else. Um, but for now, we're going to go block. Um, we may change it to grid depending on what kind of layout we're looking for. Um, and then the other thing we want is we want the overflow um, 
auto um, because we want this piece to be the piece that scrolls for us. Um, I think that's all we want for right now. So then, you know, our, our template now will be, um, you know, for, for now, we're just going to go um, with an H1. Um, and we're just going to say, um, these are our articles. Um, and then we're going to go back to our index page and we need to add a reference to our articles. Um, so here we should be able to just pull in all articles. Um, and we will need to import that. Doesn't look like it did. Um, but we can go ahead and do that. So we'll just script that. Um, and then just not from view. Wow. Uh, <laughs> we're going to import from slash index um, slash all articles. Why does it <laughs> dot analog? Um, and that's interesting. Oh, it's because I didn't add the component to it. Um, that's why. Um, but we can fix that. And my dog is not happy. Um, hey, Indy, shh, shh, shh. you're okay, pup. It's okay. Shh, shh, shh. She's, um, She's very, very protective of our yard from our from our window. Um, and so <laughs> she's being super protective of my yard. Um, I may have to kick her out of the office if she gets too loud. But she's struggling today because my wife and daughters um, are out of town for spring break, and it's just me and her. Um, and I work most of the day, and so she's just really struggling and wants to be around people. Hey, Indy, come here, pup. Come here. But yeah. So she's just wanting some attention, wanting to be loved. And so she's sitting in my office, um, and there's a chair right by the window in my office. And she likes to sit there and just growl at people as they walk by. Um, uh, you think you're tough, huh? But um, yeah, she's a good pup. She takes good care of us. Very, very lovely. And now she's just sitting right between my feet. Um, she's probably hanging out with me for the stream, which will be good. But that means she won't bark. Um, anyway, so we renamed this file. And the cool thing about that is all I really have to do is just add the component here. Um, and then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to say with analog. And we're just going to add it to the imports array. Um, it's not liking that. I think I did my import wrong. We'll take a look. We'll go take a look at the home page. Um, no, that is the right way to do it. Um, All dash articles dot component dot analog. It just may not recognize the file. Um, I'm not sure. Cannot resolve file. We'll see. We will see. So that should be all we need. Um, we'll just make sure that everything built. It looks like it did. It even built the index page again. Um, so that's weird that it, the blog footer, it just keeps reloading that. Um, so if we click here, it is not working. Let's go ahead and inspect this portion here. This is our div with our flex grow, our router, our index, and all articles. Um, It's probably the rename. 
let's um let's go ahead and just shut this down really quick and then um we'll we'll run it again and see if it picks it up. Hey Meshal, um welcome to the stream and thank you for the first time chat. Um Oh, Josh is correcting me. You named it all dash article components instead of Oh, did I need to add lang ts? See, uh, thank you, Josh. Um, I did name it that, so let's fix that. Um, I appreciate that a lot. Um, and then the other thing that he's calling out, so let's go ahead. And I need to add the lang equals ts here. Um, and that will allow it to know that it's TypeScript, and that fixes it. Um, thank you, Josh. Um, big help. Um, I probably would have spent the next five minutes trying to track that down. So let's see. There we go. These are our articles. And the nice thing is, um, when I was first working on this with Chow, um, imports that were self-closing didn't work in Windows for whatever reason. Um, they've made a lot of improvements. Um, and now they're working just fine. So, you know, we can see these are our articles. Um, we're... So one thing we've got a problem with is look at our scroll bar here. <laughs> um, it's super small. Uh, so if we go take a look within here. Um, so this div takes up the whole space, right? Um, the router index, but this index doesn't. And our all articles doesn't. Um, so let's um, let's go ahead and just on our um, all articles component, um, we're going to go add another class here, and we're just going to say that it's a height full um, and a width full. And what that's going to do for us is make it expand to take up the full size. Um, so we should. So now we can see that our um, scroll bar went away. And when we look, now our, our, our all articles, um, that's a, our all articles, that's a tough sentence to say. Um, but it's now growing to fill the entire place. Um, and then, you know, if it goes bigger than the 100%, then it will um, add the scroll bar to the side, which is what we want. Uh, the last thing we want to do is we're just going to add like a padding of eight. Um, and we're going to see um, that, that should pull us away from like the top and the sides. Um, that, that looks fine. Um, yeah, that looks totally fine. Um, so at this point, what we want to do is build a couple of articles. Um, very, very similar. The way I'm envisioning these is they will be very, very similar to this. We'll just list it all the way down. Um, each article will have you know, their, their hero image. And then they'll have the, and, and in fact, we can probably just copy this component um, and then use it here also. Um, so. Let's do that. That component is here in our home, um, and it is the main article component. Um, so this is the component that actually does all of that um, with all the gradients and everything in it. Um, and we've even got the optimized image. Um, but this is, looks like it's most, the image is hard coded. Everything else is fine. Um, so we are, we're going to move this out of the home component and we're gonna move it into this components um, library up here. We'll go ahead and refactor that and see what happens. Um, so let's go ahead and add a new folder. I um, mean, this folder, we're just gonna call it our main, well, we're going to call this our article folder. Um, well, we'll call this our article blurb folder. Um, we're going to move this into there. Sure, go ahead and refactor. 
Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to rename this to be our article dash blurb. Um, and this should break a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so we'll go ahead and refactor that. Actually, the really the only thing that it should break is within our article container. Um, So we are grabbing it from components, article blurb, article blurb. Um, we should rename this from main article to article blurb. Um, and actually, I don't have to do that. It should have picked it up um, already. So um, this import is not going to work. It's instead going to be called our article blurb. Um, and then down here, our main article is now our article blurb. So there we go. Um, and that should be good. That should fix us. So hopefully we compile. It looks like we do. Um, we, we were broken for a while on these imports, um, but it looks like we're fixed there. So, um, let's go take a look and make sure that we're fixed. Yeah. So this is fine. And if we inspect it, um, we'll see that it's been renamed to the article blur. And it was a little bit confusing to me because I don't use analog and I don't use single file components. Um, and <laughs> Angular versus React versus Vue for a big EE website. Um, I have opinions, but they aren't strongly held opinions, right? Um, Angular versus React versus Vue. Um, first of all, you're missing Quick, um, which is a uh, which is another one that um, out of out of those, um, I'm super interested in Quick. Um, but Angular just announced um, that they're going to be mixing the SSR with Wiz, um, which should give Angular similar streaming um, abilities um, to Quick, um, which in my mind um, really is a big um, selling point for Angular. Um, Angular versus React versus Vue, where I work, we we have both Angular and React. Um, both teams get work done. Both teams produce enterprise quality software. Um, well, not even teams. Multiple teams are doing this, right? Um, so um, I live closest to the Draper office in Utah. Um, and the Draper office for Bill used to be the Divi offices. Um, and Divi did everything in React. Um, so they're, they're a whole company in and of themselves. They, they produced an amazing product in React. Um, and Bill has traditionally been um, an Angular shop, although some of the San Jose teams do both Angular and React now. Um, I tend to fall on the side of Angular because I know it well, and I also feel like um, it has some advantages in an enterprise setting. Um, but I also recognize that my knowledge of React is not that um, not as good as my knowledge of Angular, and um, my knowledge of Vue is even less than my knowledge of React. Um, so I can't even speak to Vue. I do know Vue has an amazing community, um, and I follow a lot of the Vue maintainers um, on social media and in, you know, in the content that they share. Um, very, very intelligent people. And um, I, I learn a lot of things about programming from the stuff that they share. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm old enough that I don't, um, I don't get into the flame wars as much as I probably used to enjoy when I was younger. Um, I, I don't find them um, that exciting, I guess. Oh, I was dropping frames quite a bit, it looks like. I was dropping 8.5% of my frames for a while. 
Um, I'm not sure why I would be doing that. I do know we were notified that they're working on the internet in my neighborhood. So if I suddenly go dark, and that means I probably lost my internet. Um, if that happens, um, sorry. I don't have any control over that. Um, but yeah. Um, that was super simple. Like that refactor kind of threw me for a bit because of how simple it was. I renamed the file. That's it. Um, and then I changed a couple of imports. Um, holy crap. That import sucks. That import really sucks. Is that really the import that I'm using to get to that date times lib? One, two, three, four, five directories up. One, two, three, four, five, and then libs. Yeah, it is. And then dates. I can do better. I'm exporting this. Um, and then if we go look in our TS config, um, here, no, that's tailwind. That was in TS config. Um, the TS config I'm looking for is down here, the TS config base. So within the TS config base, I've got the angular blog dates. Um, so that import sucks. Um, that really sucks. Um, and it's just a weird import. So I can just change this to angular dash blog slash dates. Um, and that's going to fix that up. Um, this one is going up to services, which is fine. Um, oh, the model, the model, the model. Um, so I like to keep things in the same location. Um, and the reason I like to do that is it helps me avoid, um, circular references in other places. Right. Um, so like here, my components is pointing to the pages and then this model. And I stuck the model um, right next to the, the things here because they were using it. It doesn't make sense for this to be here anymore. I should move this models folder up um, and we want it to be off of the Angular blog. Um, so we'll just put it here. Um, and we want it to be in yeah, that'll be fine. Um, and we moved our models up, um, but now we're gonna have to fix our imports again, right? Um, actually, no, it fixed it for us. Thank you, WebStorm. Um, so that one's all fixed. Um, the Angular, the secondary article here, this import, it doesn't look like it fixed. Did I ever import that? Import. Um, here, we're just going to import the article um, from dot dot slash model slash article. Probably need to go up one more. Um, and it's not article, it's article.model. Um, there we go. And now we've got the article imported. Um, whoops. And I think it's article model, right? Um, yeah, it is article model. How did this work? How did this work before? Um, so this should be article model um, because it's obviously working. Um, we were displaying the secondary um, articles here. 
Um, and down here in our like article dot content and dot title. I guess the reason it worked is that it compiled um, and um, at, at runtime, this doesn't matter. Um, this is this is just to help with typings um, during, um, you know, during compile time and also when we're writing the code. It's mostly to help with um, typings when we're writing the code. Um, so I must have renamed it or moved it at some point in time, um, and it was never updated here. Um, and since it was never updated here, I, I'm actually surprised that that didn't break in the TS compile. Um, we're obviously compiling now, and, and it definitely worked because we had the secondary articles. These are our secondary articles here, right? Um, so <laughs> I don't know. It, it's just, that's interesting. Um, I'm really curious how that didn't break, why that compiled and why it worked. Um, very curious why that worked. Um, and then so these are all just C CSS things that, um, so we can see that the Tailwind CSS stuff is running on this page, but for whatever reason, um, the, um, WebStorm tool is not using Tailwind, and so it's complaining about non-standard CSS rules. Um, but um, that's okay. I'm more interested in in how that compiled and worked for so long. Um, if I if I comment this out, um, and I um, if I just leave it like this, does it compile? Um, it definitely compiles. It just compiled the secondary article. Um, and so if we go here and we refresh, yeah, it's still, it's still building that secondary article. Um, that's really interesting to me. Um, the reason it works is that the inputs from Angular at runtime um, are getting um, an input, right? So the bindings are passing in an article model, um, but it is a little bit, um, it's a little bit weird that that, that that works. What is this line? Um, oh. That is fascinating. So, <laughs> TypeScript's like, yeah, I don't know what this is, right? But at runtime, my date time helper um, is working just fine because this is like 13 days ago, 28 days ago, 31 minutes ago, right? And if we run it again, um, eventually we'll get one far enough in the past that it, it will show an actual date instead of days ago. But that that's fascinating to me that that works. Um, I don't know why, but we'll fix it so that we don't have that issue anymore. Um, oh, I didn't know I could drag that around. That's cool. Um, and, and once I fix that, it fixes this issue too. Um, fascinating. Very, very fascinating. I don't. I don't know. Well, I know how it was working before, right? Because at runtime, Angular was expecting a required input. I was giving it a required input um, because I knew it needed to be an article model. Um, I was giving it an article model, um, and that meant that all the signals were working. So at runtime, we were perfectly fine. I just don't know how it passed compile time. Um, that's fascinating to me. Anyway, back to our articles component here. Um, so let's just set up a quick variable. Let's we'll call this const all articles um, equals, and then we will say that we want to create a fake article. What did I call it? Um, so if we go look at the 
home page. That is not where we do it. It's in the article container where we're doing it right now. Um, create test article. Um, we're going to create like between 15 and 20 articles. Um, and so let's close this and go find my um, find my all articles um, let's create test article right there um, and this will only create one um, what we want is array dot from um, and here we can say length and we're going to use faker for this um, because we've already blown up our package site or size, so we'll import faker, um, and we're going to say faker dot number um, dot int, and here we're going to say we want between fifteen and um, thirty articles. Um, and we got extra stuff there and then the next thing we want to do is now that we've got the faker stuff set up for the land um, oh yeah we do need that one um, we also want to add um, this is just our create fake article um, or test article um, and that is going to help us in the future. Um, and oh. Yeah, that, that was a good point. Um, so the first article, or the first um, parameter to array.from is um, anything that has a size on it. Um, and so we can say that, hey, our size has a length of a minimum of 15, a max of 30. Um, and then the second parameter is just the function you want to use. We're just going to pass a create test article because we aren't going to pass anything special to it. Um, retrieving completions. Okay, thank you. Um, and that should be good here. Um, so the next thing we can do is just down here, um, we can say um, that at four, and inside of here, um, we want. Um, article of all articles um, and we're going to track article dot ID um, and oh it, it's not a signal um, and then that there we go. Um, so the next thing we can do um, is we can just add, um, we can add our um, article blurb, the article blurb, um, and then we'll just say article equals article. And there we go. And I'm not sure, like, so with our article blurb, the way we just find our input is with the input dot required here, right? Um, and it works. Um, but for whatever reason, it's not recognizing this as an um, input. Um, and maybe I need to figure out something around that. Um, 
So if we go look at, they have their single file component up yet. Um, we got some NX schematics. Um, their routing, data fetching. Interesting. Um, we can go take a look at GitHub and just see. So it's inside of here. Um, packages, Astro Angular, um, and inside of the source, um, actually, is it inside of Lips? Nope. The analog. Migration source lib. There's SSR. Um, let's let's look for um, let's look for template, right? Um, I've got a blog template in here. These are um, these are typical Angular components. Let's search um, the entire file, and we'll just search for. Template. We'll just see what we can find. Oh, did I just see that that was Chris Perko that it? That's cool. Um, I got to go back and look. That was that was Chris Perko. That's awesome. Um, so um, when I was organizing for the Angular Community Meetup, Chris Perko, I got to know him pretty well. Pretty amazing guy. Um. That's really cool to see him uh, contributing to Analog. I'm going to have to reach out and just say, hey, Chris, I saw your name. That's awesome. Um, this is generators, um, ESLint generators. Um, Post CSS, TRPC client, Vite, Tailwind, context. Dot .ts this is still in generators create analog server um main provider template's probably going to show up everywhere that's the problem um template blog template blog so here's a markdown template um authoring a welcome component. Um, Angular template. Um, welcome component. The analog. More generators. More generators. Router. Create analog. V plugin. The analog. Template is probably a bad one to search for. Um, actually, the better one to search for is probably the scripts tag. Because um, that's not going to show up very often. So authoring analog.ts, process script analog. Really what I want to see is like here, this ng app. So they're importing a whole bunch of stuff from Angular. After next render, 
they're rendering the console. There's Chow. So yeah, they're they're doing inputs the same way that I am. Um, so it must be the plugin that's not picking this up. But we can see here that they're doing, um, you know, the input is a const variable. Um, I'm going to leave this code up just in case we need to refer to it in the future. Um, but if if we look at ours, um, our article is an input dot required. So we're doing the same thing, right? If we took the required off, it'd be the exact same thing. Um, so I'm not sure what the issue is, but anyway, um, I'm not sure why it's you know why it's doing that. Um, we've got our article container. Oh, this is in the home page. Um, so within all articles, we're just looping through. We've got our four, and you know we're passing the article in. Um, so if we hit this page, um, it should generate nothing. Because why would it generate anything? Attempt to use a disconnected port? What? No, we're definitely serving. What's going on here? Let's go ahead and inspect this. Um, there's our all articles. There's all of our blurbs. Oh, did I not import that? I didn't. That's my problem. I didn't import the um, component. So import um, article blurb. And here we're going to go from, um, we're going to go dot dot slash dot dot slash components. Um, did I not? Is it just dot dot slash components? How many far? I got to go back three. It looks like. Um. There we go. So then it's article blurb dot components dot analog. Um. And the next thing we want to do is with, um, and then we can say um, analog imports. So we're going to add it to the imports array. Um, just make sure that you did the right component. So. Article container, article container. So here's my article container, um, article blurb. Oh, I'm missing this part. Um, and that goes into all articles um there we go um now it's the saying cannot resolve symbol article blurb um oh Right, you can't because it's a default export, and I keep making that mistake with analog. I'm, I, I don't use default exports that much in Angular. Um, this one, cor corresponding file is not included in tsconfig. What? So you pass in it options. It's either a number or it's a min with a max. Um, let's see if that compiles. Does this compile? It's compiling. Um, and we also saw that it was putting a bunch of articles in there. So now if we go look at all articles, there we go. 
Um, so now they're all showing up. Um, but they're all stacked like right on top of each other, right? Um, and that's not good either. Um, and so we can easily just add a style. Um, we can say, you know, article blurb. Um, and we want it to be the not the last. Um, I, I always have to look this up. Um, CSS selector not last. Um, and I did most. Um, so yeah, not last child. So we're just going to go not last child. Um, so here we just do not last child. Um, do I want to do this? Because I'm just going to do like padding bottom or um, margin bottom. Um, and, you know, we'll do like two rem, maybe. Well, that's probably a huge one. Um, I don't know that I like the line, but um, so we can see we're getting like some space in between our articles. Um, and the last one's not getting that space. Um, if we come and inspect this, we'll see that uh, we're a little bit bigger than um, than we expected. Um, so here's our article blurb. Um, oh, we've got the eight pixels around everything. Um, I don't think we need it on the bottom. Um, so we can fix that. We can say P8, but we want our padding bottom to be zero. Um, and that's going to fix the, the weird padding issue we've got here at the bottom. So now it's right by the articles. We don't have all the stuff on the bottom. I'm going to get rid of that line. But I actually, I think we can do um, within Tailwind, um, Tailwind CSS. Um, and I think we can do like a not last child. Um, so not last child. Um, Oh, that's how they're doing it. So Tailwind adds a whole bunch of stuff that we can do. There's the hover, focus, focus within, focus visible, active, visited, target, first child. Um, and so you can do first colon last child, last colon. So they're just adding the PB0 um, here. So they're doing padding on the top and bottom. Um, and then only is if it's the only child, they're not adding any padding. Um, it doesn't matter as much for us uh, because we'll be the last child anyway. Um, odd, even, first of type, last of type. Empty, disabled, enabled, check. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, so yeah, we we can say, instead of doing this, um, we can say, on our article blurb, um, we can say class equals, and we can say padding bottom of four, um, but last, uh, padding bottom of zero. Um, and the nice thing about that is Tailwind will, will compile these together. Um, and so if we select the last item, we shouldn't see both on it. Um, that's a much smaller padding, but that's okay. I don't want them. 
Uh, maybe I want them to have more space. We'll see. Um, but here on this last item, if we inspect it, um, and we look at this article blurb. Oh, it does. So last child, we can see it's still got the PB4 and the last PB0. Um, and so it's, yeah, it is overriding that. That's okay. Um, is there a way to do not last child and tailwind? Because um, that does bother me a little bit. Um, not. Um, the components layout flex box and grid effects. Oh, maybe not. Interesting. I'm also I'm also getting a bit of dropped um dropped frames um that I'm seeing. I'm checking out yeah my bit rate is all over the place right now. Um Not sure why. Uh, let's just look at my task manager. Um, my CPU is fine. Both of my GPUs seem to be fine. My Ethernet seems. Oh. Yeah, my Ethernet seems to be jumping all over the place. Um, I wonder. I wonder. It's probably my internet. Um, I do apologize for dropped frames. Um, I'm hoping it's not too bad. Um, we'll keep going. All right. So it looks like if you want to do, um, you know, different things, you, you've got to do last. You can't do not last child. Um, that is something unique to, um, to Tailwind. And maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Before before I go that way, um, let's do Tailwind CSS not last child. How to use not in Tailwind CSS. Perfect. Um, and this is bright, and I'm sorry about that. Um, oh, interesting. You've got to use their arbitrary variants. How old is that? That's oh, only a couple years old. Um, oh, this is uh, interesting. Very interesting. Um, this is view syntax, right? Yeah, I think this is this is view syntax. I don't it might be old view syntax. Um like I said, my knowledge of view isn't that great. Um but they're using the for loop to do it. Um we're gonna let it be. It looks like that's the way you do it, is with the last selector. Um I don't know how big of a deal it is that we've got this overriding this, but um that's okay. The, the one thing I wanted to do um, is if there were no articles, um, I wanted to show an empty. Um, and you can do that with empty like this. Um, 
and then you can just say, yeah, no articles found. Um, and what does that even look like? Text center and text gray. Um, probably doing the empty wrong. Yeah. Um, let's go look that up. Um, so here we'll take a look at, um, in or at four. Um, there we go. So at four has That of that's empty. You can optionally include an empty, oh, at, at empty. That's my problem. I didn't add the at. Um, so there we go. And now it actually highlights. Um, so let's go take a look. Um, so we're not going to get anything until I go up here and let's just comment this. We'll just say const all articles equals and we'll just give it an empty array um and so now in testing uh, no articles found that's fine i'm okay with that um the only downside to this is like if i go to a light theme and i apologize for your uh, that's not bad okay um Okay, I'm good. We're good. It works. So it works on light and dark. That's fine. Um, so now we've got no articles found. Um, and that's good. So we're gonna we're gonna put things back to the way they are. Um, and. The other thing I wanted to see, we're not getting the hover effect here. Um, so like if we go back to the home page, we get the, the mouse um, and we get the hover effect. Um, but as soon as we go to all articles, we don't get that effect. Um, and I think it's because the article container. Yeah, that's what's applying that hover effect. Um, so let's go and move that. Um, let's move it into our styles folder. Um, So here, there's our article hover class. So now if you want to hover over a class, you can just add this article hover. Um, and that should fix it everywhere. Um, it hasn't fixed it here. It did fix it here still. Um, I probably need to add, if we go back to our all articles, um, probably need to add the article hover, article dash hover, and that should fix it for us. Um, yeah, so there we go. We're now getting that. Um, that's interesting. So here we're getting colors mixed in. Um, here we're not. I also don't have the click event going on either. Um, so we'll need to add that in too. Um, but that mixing color, where is that coming from? Article container. Darken article. 
We've got the darken article or the darken article accent. That's the other one, huh? We'll go ahead and add that. Um, and that should add a little bit of the, the green color from our current theme, I believe. Purple. Um, it's in the dark theme where that is. Yeah, the greenish color. Um, and that's fine. Um, so there's that. And then we just need to add the click event also. Um, and click event just becomes the article.id. Um, so we can just add a router link. Um, and the reason we're doing the square brackets here is we're using um, an array inside of it. And so it needs to interpret it um, as an angular, um, an angular item. If we don't do that, then it just interprets this as a string. Um, so if we go back to our, our all articles, um let's go ahead and break this stuff out um and here we will add in our router link it doesn't know what router link is but that's okay we can import the router link um and the only other thing we want to do here is, yeah, just add the with analog imports. Um, and that should solve it for us. Um, so now, yep. Oh. Um, what is the route that, um, we inspect this. Our on click event is obviously taking us to the wrong place. Um, articles that. Um, oh, I need the slash, I think. Actually, I don't even need the slash. Um, we could just leave this as that. And that would fix it for us. Um, we were going to articles, articles. Um, yeah. Um, so the, the only downside we've got right now is that all of these images are the same. Um, and the reason that they're the same, well, actually, let's, before we start digging into that, let's, let's commit some things, right? Um, I've done a lot of coding and not a lot of committing. Um, so let's just say we um, we moved um, article um, hover to global style. Um, and then here, this is us adding the all articles. Um, but I think I want to get this other refactor in um, the the article model um, and then moving it to the blurb. How come I'm not picking up the move of the model? Blurb. Is it, it recognizes it here, but it's not showing the file actually moving. Um, it's a bit weird. Um, but we're going to say that we moved article model and renamed um, main article component 
to article blurb component um, and moved to components. Um, so there we go. Um, there's the next commit. And then um, here we can say we updated um, slash articles um, and added all articles component. And there we go. Um, there's a, oh, why did I commit that here? Uh, that, okay, that's weird. I don't know why I did that, but. Oh, it was it was already down here. That's what happens. Um, it recognized that there was a rename, and so um, so if you if it doesn't track it, it could lose um, track of it, and it'll look like a delete and an add. Um, so it keeps it down. That's what happened. I didn't look. Um, I knew that file should have been renamed and moved, but. Um, I just didn't, I didn't pay attention as I was committing stuff. All right. So that's all in place. Um, so the image, right? The, how do we fix the image? Um, the best way to fix the image is to probably go into model. So here's our article model. Um, and we should just create an image um, in our image. Yeah, we'll call it image URL. Um, and that will be a string. Um, but see, now we're broken down here and that's fine. Um, so we can parse out our image URL. Um, and then down here, um, we just say image URL is image URL, or we're going to build one. So we're just going to say, um, yeah. Um, but we're using 250 by 250. So 250 by 250. Um, and then here we're adding the ID. Um, but ID might not be there. So we're actually going to, instead of doing that, um, we're going to say faker dot word dot random. Um, hey, puppy, you're okay. Faker dot word. Um, a random sample of random or optionally specified length. Um, no, we'll just return a noun. Um, that's fine. So there we go. We'll just return a random noun. Um, so now um, it's not going to do anything because I didn't change it. Um, so now we can go back to our article blurb. Um, and right here where we've got an ng source, um, we can actually change this to be that. And here we can just say article um, dot image. Oh, there we go. Um, and uh, it's image URL. And we can even add the ng optimize to a width and height of 250. Um, is that not right? Um, 
I'll need to go look up the ng source. Um, but now we're getting random images, right? Um, and here we're getting a random image. Um, so as we jump in, right, we're getting just random images from um, the lorem pick. Interesting. What is this one? Um, this image is motion. So it doesn't have one for motion. Um, but most of these other ones it does. Um, so you now we're getting, getting random images. That's fine. Um, this will eventually all go away and we'll get it all from the con like our CMS, right? Um, and um, there'll probably be AI generated images to be honest. Um, I'll probably generate like a batch of AI generated images. Um, you guys may have seen, um, you know, when I'm pulling up my local host, um, I have comfy UI is one of the things um, I, um, I like to use comfy as my AI generation. I don't have to pay for it. Um, I'm getting pretty good at it. Um, I don't know if I can run it on stream. I may have to test that, but um, comfy UI, um, if we go look for it, right? Um, so this is what I use for my image generation. Um, it, it can be a little bit intimidating at first, but it's actually really, really powerful and allows you to do some cool stuff. Um, you can start looping things through AI and stuff. Um, so you load a checkpoint. Your checkpoint is your model, um, and you can grab your models off of just anywhere where um, Hugging Face, um, Civet AI, there, there's a bunch of places where you can grab your models. Um, and then this, you know, you set up your two prompts. This is the positive prompt. You can tell because it's connected there. And here's the negative prompt. Um, and then, you know, your model goes in here. And then your ve, well, the clip is, um, so your checkpoints are a whole bunch of embeddings. Your clip is how it parses the text that you put in here into your, um, into the vectors um, that the sampler uses to determine whether the noise has all been resolved. So then your sampler will come in, it will add a whole bunch of noise, random noise. Um, actually, no, your latent down here adds all your random noise. Your sampler comes in and it samples the random noise um, using the vectors from your checkpoint. Um, and then you, you have a VA decode and then you can show a sample image. Um, you know, it, it's a little bit complicated if, when you're first learning it, but once, once you understand how it works, um, it's a really, really powerful tool. Um, so um, I've been working on some stuff to generate images and then upscale them to be bigger and um, add more detail. And um, I'm also using different types of samplers um, that change the way, like how strongly it sticks to the prompts. Um, and I'm using different types of prompt types. Really, really powerful tool um, for generating AI art. Um, the only thing is your computer has to be able to run it. You need like um, an eight gig, um, you need eight gigs of RAM on your video card. Um, actually, that's not true. You can run it on a CPU. Um, so your computer just has to be powerful enough to run it. Um, if you run it on your CPU, it will be much slower than if you run it on a video card. Um, I can generate like a 1024 by 1024 image in 13 seconds. Um, I can upscale it um, a few more times and, you know, have like a four times that size in about a minute on my video card. Um, if I were to do that on my CPU, that would probably take about 15 minutes. So if you have a video card, it'll be useful. Um, one of my absolute favorite tools, um, so we'll, we'll do some AI art to generate for our articles. Um, and yeah, but um, I think I'm going to end here for the evening. Um, my poor puppy looks so sad. Um, and I've been at work all day. She needs some attention. Um, I'm probably going to go take her for a walk. Um, and while the sun is still up, it's a beautiful day outside. Day out. It's a beautiful day today outside. Um, 
And, um, but we will see you guys all on Thursday. Thank you everybody for being here. Um, and, um, Hey, Oh, I wasn't watching my Twitch stream. Um, it's good to see you, man. Um, had a good discussion. Uh, I don't want to dox you, but I know, I know who you are and thank you for joining. Really appreciate it. Um, it was a great discussion yesterday. Really enjoyed it. Um, have a great evening. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's, that's the toughest thing, right? Like, um, a lot of people know who I am. A lot of people know where I live. Um, my friends show up in stream people that I know personally. Um, and I have to be very, very careful about doxing them. Right. Um, there are certain people that, you know, like, like Chow who shows up, um, you, you know, he's going to show his face on stream and stuff like that, but other people, um, other people, you know, you don't, you don't want to dox somebody's username. So, um, and like Josh, right. Everybody knows Josh. Um, so, uh, but thank you. Um, and I almost said your name, but thank you very much for being here. It's good to see you. Um, I need to, I needed to be watching my Twitch chat too. Um, but you guys have a great evening. Um, we will see you all Thursday. Um,